This is a 38-year-old female presenting with a history of uh, uterine fibroids. Patient primarily presented with bulk symptoms. She has uh, increased urinary frequency, urgency, pelvic fullness, severe menorrhagia, previously requiring hospitalization and blood transfusions. Uh, patient does have a history of open myomectomy in May of 2016, which was complicated by a very long recovery period as well as delayed wound healing at the surgical site. Um, since her surgery, her menorrhagia symptoms did improve. However, she has noticed that she has heavy periods still lasting up to two weeks and continues to have persistent pelvic fullness. Um, here's a pelvic ultrasound, basically showed a single large anterior fibroid spanning the uterine fundus in the corpus. Next slide. Um, the MRI obtained in October of 2017 um, demonstrated a 10 by 12.6 centimeter heterogeneous intramural fibroid in the anterior uterine bo body, as you can see here. So Gajan's going to gain access. He's going to sort of talk us through it here. It's a pretty good sized radial artery. So first I'm going to give some lidocaine. You always say Gajan, that's about... Point three. Yeah, it's so about three millimeters. Yeah. So we can't see the ultrasound image, but you measured it, and that's what we always do. We always measure the artery before we access. You right. said it's about 2.3. No, it's a zero point. Uh, three millimeters. It's a three millimeters. Oh, that's, that's three point zero. Okay. That's, that's for nice. a female patient. That's huge. That's probably one of the bigger ones that you would mm -hmm. see for this type of procedure. And so um, Mona, you did the um, barbo. It's barbo B waveform. Aaron, one, one quick comment. I think we, we always use uh, lidocaine. Um, we always use less than one ml of lidocaine. One important point, if the patient does not have much fat, this patient, as you can see there, has a quite a bit of soft tissue between the skin and the artery. So you have a good space between to manipulate your needle. But in very skinny patients, sometimes they don't have no fat or minimal fat between the skin and the artery. So actually, the, the uh, uh, lidocaine actually creates a cushion, creates some space for you to have more stability to go in a 30 degrees angle and then get access to the artery. So that actually can play in your favor if you do that. And what you guys should look for is a good flash. And sometimes, as you can see here, sometimes it's more challenging. Um, and it's good to see this just because accessing the radio artery isn't always straightforward. So uh, even, with, right? even in a big artery mm -hmm. like this, uh, you really want to make sure that you get a good flash. Uh, if you don't and you have a small artery, and this good. comes into play a lot okay. with Eufy, uh, Sometimes I'll do a double wall puncture and I'll pull back. Again, so this, is, this is why I've moved a little bit more towards a double wall type technique. There we go. Good. There's a pop. Maybe you have a flash. Let me do it. And, and what you're looking for there on the needle, this is a small needle. It's a small gauge needle. You just want to see a little bit of blood uh, trickling out. You don't want to see uh, nothing because if the artery is patent, you should have a trickle of blood. If you don't, you're either in the anterior wall or you're, you went too okay. far. That passed easily, so we're in. So as Gajan's saying, the wire passed freely now. Just put it back on. A, a no great. resistance. <clears throat> so okay. this is similar to the video that I showed. This is the four French okay. yeah. uh, glide sheath slender. And so this is essentially a five French sheath. It'll catheter. accept five French catheters, but it's really only going to make Except a four French fish. hole in the vessel. This sheath has really changed a lot of our practice. We, we've, we've converted over a lot of our complex the interventions cocktail. to these slender type sheaths. Uh, and you can see he tracked that right over the wire that came in the kit. And we have a nice stable axis in the vessel. And now he's probably going to put the cocktail in. Is that right, Gajan? Yep. I have the cocktail right here. I'm going to do some hemodilution. So th this, is a, this is what we were talking about before, the tegaderm technique. And the tegaderm also keeps the sheath straight. And so this is a nice stable axis. So we're going to use a four French... 125 vert here um, by Cordis. Then we have a guide wire in there, longer Benson. I think the key as they're showing here is you need to fluoro all the time. You, you need to watch it go across the arch and down the descending. You know, obviously fluoro time is something to be concerned, you know, to, to be concerned about, uh, especially in the younger, you know, female population. However, um, you know, I, I think the advantages of radio access far supersede any uh, potential minimal increase in floral time. Now, what you can see here is there's contrast uh, mm. sitting right next to the catheter tip. Obviously, you're going to get medallions. a little spasm. So we're going to just back the, the parent catheter over the, um, 
Jeff for a sec. Over the microcatheter. You can see the washout now of the uh, contrast. Can I have some We're going to give a little nitro here just to make sure we minimize uh, or try to get rid of the spasm. You guys performed uh, uh, during the MRA, during the MR of the pelvis, you performed one sequence, which was an MRA, right? Correct. Uh, have you considered to use, and that's something we don't do much UFE, but uh, when we do, we always fuse the image and go with the oblique that has the takeoff of the uterine artery it's seen the best way. And after fusing, we just go directly to the uterine artery. Would be that technique helpful? Oh, it, af absolutely, absolutely. We, we don't, oftentimes I'll try to uh, mentally fuse, you know, I'll, I'll visualize the, the MR, but we have not used that technique. Um, I have not used that technique, let's put it that way. That's amazing, man. Yeah. So I they have it hooked up with a TUI. Um, we'll show another device later, which will give you extra length. But this is a 150 prograde, I, I would I would guess. Yeah, yes. Do a run. Uh, huh? And this is a, a 125 yeah. diagnostic catheter. So keep in mind that if you use a TUI, you're not going to have a lot of microcatheter right? length. <laughs> Luckily, though, in the uterine, you're not going to go very far with the microcatheter. Um, in prostate embolization, you're going to go a little bit further. So that that can be an issue. Good. We're getting the embolzine. Getting the embolzine. What size did you guys select? 500. Okay. So we're injecting the uh, particles now. We, uh, we basically get rid of the, aff uh, the effluent and put in about 10, um, 10 cc's of contrast. You know, when we did our initial runs, we saw no side branches uh, going to the urinary bladder, any other tissues within the uh, pelvis itself. So we feel this is a good position for us to uh, uh, administer the particles. Can I have one more of those? The major question is when to give the lidocaine, um, and we tend to give it as we're starting to see slowdown within the uterine artery. Um, some people mix it with the uh, embolzines initially. Um, you know, we've tried all of that, and you know, we do see more spasm uh, within the vessel itself if we give it very early. So we tend to give it once we start seeing a little bit of slowdown, which we're probably going to give pretty soon here on this side. Um, we give um, five uh, cc's. This is a good example, if you look at this image of the microcatheter length. And so his catheter, if you guys could zoom out a little bit on the wrist, just so we can see the position of the diagnostic catheter in the wrist, just so everybody can see how much room. So not much, right? I mean, you can see the hub. Uh, and so you're, you know, you're dealing with different lengths here. This is not uh, the same as a femoral case, obviously. Uh, but, the, but the catheter itself is long enough and the microcatheter with or without that TUI is, is long enough. All right, so we're probably going to give, um, I'm sorry, we're starting to get some uh, stasis. stasis. So we're going to give about five, again, of the Lido. So just to review, this is a 125 vertebral oh, catheter. Right right oh, no, we don't use Foley. We haven't used Foley in, a, in, a, in many, many years. This was before we, we switched to radial. Um, I think that the Foley is probably the worst part about the procedure for a lot of these women, and I think it probably creates more problems than, than, it, than it helps. So, so we've given two vials of um, 500, and now we're giving a vial of 700. So this is where I, I, I start to think a little about fluoro time, and when, when you look at the access time, I don't know if you guys noticed it was about three minutes of fluoro time, which is not very much. I mean, we, we sometimes can get into the uterine with less than a minute of fluoro time, but the, the fluoro during the embolization is, is what I think gets the dose a little bit higher. And you can see how Scott uh, coned in a little bit, uh, try not to mag too much. And these are all ways to reduce dose. We also use the Phillips Clarity system, which reduces the dose significantly in a lot of these people. So, uh, so we're done on this side, by the way. So you can see... Um, We've got the uh, slowdown of flow here. Um, you know, and one quick thing regarding uh, pain management. What we do is um, we give uh, initially 60 of Toradol. We give 1,000 uh, uh, IV. I um, mean, we've, we've uh, toyed with uh, Toradol IA. I haven't seen much of a difference. Right. Uh, no, 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 no need. Don't do it. No, if we're done, we're done. Okay. Um, we give IV, we give 1,000 of um, IV Tylenol. We can give a second 60 yeah. of uh, IV Toradol. Um, and we've given as many as 180 mm, of Toradol total. So you need approval from the pharmacy typically at our, at our place. Um, 
Secondly, we give uh, intraarterial lidocaine afterwards. So that helps in the periprocedural time frame and immediately afterwards. That wears off, obviously. So, um, you know, again, as Aaron was talking about regarding expectations regarding pain, we have to let them know and let them know even if they're feeling good immediately after the procedure, it's probably going to wear off. So t definitely take your meds afterwards. Um, ibuprofen to go home with and uh, Percocet uh, as a heavier hitter in case um, you get breakthrough pain from the, uh, from the ibuprofen. But that's what we typically uh, utilize, and it's been, you know, pretty successful um, uh, for us regarding pain management.